But growing up, the biggest thing that limited me was I could not speak. I live with a lifelong stutter. I still stutter to this day. I may stutter during this talk right now, but the fun is I've learned tips and tricks and you may never know that I stuttered, but I will know that I did. Imagine yourself growing up. I have a very active family. We're a bunch of boys and cousins. We're playing football and basketball. We're really cool. I'm hanging out with my cousin, trying to impress the girls, and my tongue won't let me introduce my own name. One of the hardest thing for stutterers is introducing yourself. And R's and T's are some of the hardest. So Richard Bontrager was a train wreck. Literally. Imagine yourself, you're in a car, you're driving, and you're going fine down the road. And an imaginary gate goes up, and you and your car stop while everyone else is flying by you as fast as it can. That's what a stutterer feels like. I know what I want to say. I know the exact word and phrase. I'm driving down the lane. I'm doing everything perfectly. And then my brain goes, Ugh. it's like someone grabs your tongue. And instead of saying Richard Bond trigger, it comes out and just stops. Or you get stuck on those hard R's. Now, what girl is going to go out with you? What guy is going to want you on their basketball football team? Because everything now is about he looks like a bumbling idiot. That's what I was told I was growing up. That's what I felt like growing up. And yet I listened to Harry Carey and Cubs baseball. Any Cubs baseball fans in the room here? There's always one or two, but I grew up listening to Harry Carey describe on the radio baseball, the wind, the batter digging in. I could smell the popcorn through the radio. That's how good he was at telling a story. And I said to my parents, I want to do that. And they're like, <laughs> yeah, never going to happen, kid. Literally, they were part of the limitation. Besides my stutter, people did not believe me.